How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at some eerie supernatural events that have been witnessed by police. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more scary content just like this. In the aftermath of the attacks on the World Trade Center in New York City on September 11, 2001, Lieutenant Frank Mara was one of the many first responders who volunteered for the gruesome task of sifting through the rubble, hoping to pull out whatever remained of the victims' bodies. During his exhausting work, he repeatedly saw a friendly woman in a Red Cross uniform, carrying a tray of sandwiches around the disaster site. Any time he tried to get a closer look at her, she seemed to vanish. He thought nothing of it until years later when he was researching a book on his experiences during 9-11 and he read about soldiers during World War II encountering a similar figure. Shocked by the coincidence, he interviewed other first responders. Several recalled seeing the woman and others admitted to seeing shapeless black masses moving through the rubble. Lieutenant Mara spoke to a medium in hopes of gaining some insight about these paranormal events and learned that the woman he and other first responders saw may have been a soul collector an entity that manifests in order to guide souls to the afterlife. Lieutenant Mara wholeheartedly believes that the kind woman he saw was indeed a collector of souls. Dave Murphy never believed in supernatural events. That is, until he began working security at the Capitol Theatre in Salt Lake City. According to the manager, the theatre is haunted by the spirit of a former Russia who died there at the age of 17 when the building caught fire in 1947. Murphy witnessed a variety of supernatural events in the theatre that made him a believer. It started with shadows moving in and out of the walls and doors slamming when he was alone in the building. He heard disembodied voices and music and even saw mysterious figures dressed in clothing from the 1900s, walking on the stage and in the control room. Murphy claims that the building's ghosts eventually became hostile, physically attacking him until he was forced to leave the job. In July of 2019, a crop circle appeared near Silbury Hill in Wiltshire in the United Kingdom. Crop circles have no definitive cause. Many believe they're caused by extraterrestrials, while others dismiss them as an entirely earthly prank. Three days after the crop circle appeared near Silbury Hill, an off-duty police officer was driving by the area when he noticed three official-looking men dressed in white who appeared to be investigating the field. Curious, he stopped his car and went to take a look. Upon closer inspection, they appeared to be forensic investigators dressed in white coveralls. However, the officer noted that all three were over six feet, which is around two meters tall, and had blonde hair. He also felt as if the air around them was buzzing with static electricity. After he had been observing them for a few minutes, the men noticed him watching. They immediately ran away at a speed no human could be capable of. The officer reported the experience, but the police department took no action because he had been off duty at the time. The officer then contacted UFO experts Andrew Russell and Colin Andrews who were convinced that the officer experienced something alien in nature. In 2015, Jennifer Grosbeck was driving home with her 18-month-old daughter Lily. An unfortunate accident sent the car through a cement barrier and over an embankment, where the car landed upside down in the river below. It was 14 hours before a fisherman spotted the accident and reported it to police. The first to arrive was Officer Tyler Beddoes. When he and three other fellow officers assessed the scene, they knew that it looked grim. However, the four men all heard a voice calling out for help. Believing that the woman in the car was still alive, they quickly jumped into the water, hoping they could still save her. They quickly realized that Jennifer had been dead for quite some time. But once in the car, they found Lily alive and still strapped into her car seat just out of reach of the icy water. Had the mysterious voice not motivated them to jump into the water so quickly, they may not have pulled Lily out of the car in time to save her life. All four officers have no explanation as to who gave the cries for help, 
and the incident remains a mystery even to this day. In 1980, James Penniston was stationed at RAF Bentwaters when he was part of a team called to investigate a downed aircraft in Rendlesham Forest. When the team arrived, they found an aircraft unlike anything they had ever seen. The craft stood on three legs and was triangular. Although reports stated it had crashed, the craft appeared to be completely intact. As the team inspected the craft, they experienced a series of supernatural events beginning when their radios malfunctioned when they approached it. They saw strange blue and yellow lights reflecting off its surface and felt the air around it was buzzing with electricity. They got close enough to the craft to measure it and make notes of the symbols adorning it, and as they approached, the lights got brighter. After a few minutes, it quietly lifted off the ground and sped away through the forest at an incredible speed, disappearing as mysteriously as it arrived. In 2014, LaToya Ammons of Gary, Indiana and her mother Rose Campbell claimed that LaToya's three children were possessed by evil entities. They claimed that the demons in their home caused the children to levitate, walk backwards up the walls, bug out their eyes, deepen their voices and smile evilly. To make these supernatural events even more terrifying, Ammons and Campbell had called the local police numerous times when the children were displaying signs of possession and the police captain corroborated their stories. The family even had a terrifying photograph that they claimed showed one of the demonic entities standing on their porch. The photo was later proven to be a fake, but the local police department still believes that the house is possessed by demons. When a New South Wales Police Department noticed that a garage door was inexplicably opened overnight, they decided to check their CCTV footage to see if they could find the culprit. They ended up finding more than they bargained for. Just before dawn, the footage shows the parking lot completely empty of people. Everything is quiet and still when the garage door suddenly begins to open all on its own. When the door is about half open, a broom suddenly comes flying out of the door. It remains upright for a moment before falling to the ground with a final kick. The police department stated that they'd be having a technician inspect the door, but offered no explanation for the flying broomstick. Meredith Shearman, a 911 operator, describes her most harrowing call as a different kind of evil. This call came when a family needed help, claiming their teenage daughter was possessed. They stated they were holding her down but didn't know what else to do. Shearman could hear the girl screaming in the background and an adult male voice yelling in a different language. As it was difficult to speak with the caller over the voices in the background, Shearman asked the caller to please tell whoever was yelling at the girl to stop. The caller said it was the girl. Frustrated, Shearman said that she knew the girl was screaming, but that she needed the man yelling at the girl to quiet down. The caller said it's her, both voices. To this day, Shearman claims that call to be one of the most mysterious and chilling she's ever received. It was just a routine day when Officer Marco Castillo was booking a domestic violence offender. There was a creepy man in cell number one who kept quietly staring at him, but that wasn't unusual in a jail. A few hours later, his sergeant asked him to check the paperwork to see if any prisoners needed to be transported to the county jail. When Castillo went into the jail, he panicked. Cell number one was empty. Everyone began investigating and they quickly discovered the man was never booked. They looked at the security footage from earlier in the day. They saw him sitting there in the cell, but once all four of the officers left the room, he suddenly disappeared. They transferred the footage from a VHS tape to a USB drive, and the man was missing from the footage entirely. However, they could see other prisoners in nearby cells talking in his direction. To this day, Castillo is nervous about going into that part of the building alone. No one has any explanation as to who the man in cell number one could be.
Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at an eerie welfare check performed by a police officer, remember to hit that subscribe button and tickle the bell icon. That way you'll be notified about all our latest scary and creepy content. Officer Chuck Feel got a call to check on an elderly woman when a concerned neighbour hadn't seen her for a few weeks. When he arrived at the house and spoke to the neighbour, he could see piles of mail and dust on the car, making him fear the worst. A glance around the outside didn't reveal any signs of foul play, so he stood on a bucket to peer inside the front window. He could see that the TV had been left on, but nothing looked disturbed. He turned to tell the neighbour what he saw, and when he looked back at the window, an elderly woman was standing with her face right up next to the glass. Feel was so shocked that he fell backwards from the bucket. The concerned neighbour tried to help him, but he quickly clambered back onto the bucket and looked back through the window. Just in time to see the old woman slowly walking down the hallway, she turned slightly and looked at him out the corner of her eye before disappearing down the hallway. He quickly told the neighbour that he saw the woman and left, too terrified to investigate any further. If you want to hear about some more paranormal events, then check out that video on the top there. Otherwise, there's a scary playlist right there. Now, remember to follow us on all our other socials as well. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All the links are in the description box below. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time. 